Hey there, Eli again, coming at you from OSA Coventry here today in front of our beautiful invert system with some of the funnest fish that we've had in a while. And those are these little line seahorses. These are Hippocampus erectus, which is a Caribbean species of seahorse. These are actually the type of seahorse that occasionally you might see off of our own coasts and they do exist all the way down to about the coast of florida these guys are very different from your typical fish in their morphological appearance as you can see they are definitely strange looking animals they do not resemble what most of you would consider a fish however they are truly a fish but they are very much adapted to the wild environments around seagrass and kelp beds where they get to behave a little bit differently than most other fish would so as you can see on this little yellow chain here and this other plastic chain in the tank, these seahorses have a prehensile tail that they can use to anchor themselves to this substrate. In this case, most of these guys are attached to this yellow chain, but in their wild environment, a lot of the times they are going to be associated with eelgrass beds and they will spend most of their time latched onto these eelgrass beds searching for food to swim by. Most of your seahorse species are going to be eating zooplankton. A lot of times these are mycid shrimp, copepods, amphipods, anything that they can fit in their mouth. And they tend to graze just about all day. So one of the interesting things about a seahorse is that in the wild environment, and this counts for most seahorses, they are grazing for almost all day, about 24 seven, or at least during the daytime hours. And for this reason, they lost the need for a well-developed gut. So with most seahorses, they have basically a pass-through gut system where they don't have a very developed stomach. And this is just because they are constantly grazing in the wild and they don't necessarily need a large gut to where they can hold large amounts of food to digest over a longer period of time. More likely with the seahorses, they are going to be grazing small creatures throughout the day and they're very adapted to constantly grazing and constantly digesting these smaller particles throughout the daytime period. That's important to know when keeping seahorses because they are definitely one of the aquarium animals that definitely do prefer multiple smaller feedings per day. That is probably the biggest struggle with keeping seahorses in captivity is that they generally need to be fed over the course of the daytime. So thawing smaller amounts of frozen food and feeding over a few intervals per day, three or four times should be sufficient for a larger adult seahorse and more times as they're a little bit smaller is really important to ensuring their health because they can get very skinny quickly if they're not fed properly and they are quite prone to illnesses as they deteriorate in condition. Definitely important to keep that in mind when keeping seahorses is that they need to be fed basically throughout the day. Also worth mention is that seahorses are not the longest lived aquarium fish whereas some of your other fish say clownfish or tangs, a lot of your other saltwater aquarium fish may live 10, 12, 15 years if properly cared for. It's most common for seahorses, regardless of the type, to only live for about three to five years in the aquarium setting, maybe even a little less. So these guys are not the most long-lived pets, but that is to be expected, and that is just the way that these guys roll. As I mentioned earlier, these are the lined seahorse, Hippocampus erectus, which is a Atlantic species. However, there are numerous different species of seahorses that are um, found in the tree. A lot of these different species have very similar characteristics, with many of the common aquarium seahorses reaching about five, maybe six inches full grown, and that includes their fully stretched out tail. So they generally look a little bit smaller than that. And they all have that same issue where they need to be fed throughout the day. There are also other species such as pygmy and dwarf seahorses that tend to be a little less common in the trade. And they're definitely a little more difficult to care for. So if seahorses are something you really wanted to get into, I would go for one of the larger species. With the line seahorses like I have here, an aquarium of 30 or 40 gallons in size with decent filtration, should be appropriate and generally keeping them in a species specific tank for a tank with very shy tank mates things that are not very rambunctious kind of helps to make sure that it's easy enough to keep the seahorses fed and that they are receiving the proper amount of food throughout the day and they don't have to compete with other tank mates for food so some tank mates for seahorses would include some of your smaller goby species, maybe some small blennies, but I really would not stray very far into some of your other fish species, clownfish, damselfish, any of these other aggressive feeders, 
as they kind of put a hurting on the seahorses when it comes down to food. Filtration is very important for seahorses, especially since I just mentioned that they generally need to be fed throughout the day. It is very common for a seahorse tank to end up with very high nitrates and phosphates just as an artifact of being fed so frequently. So making sure that you have a robust filter with a very good bacterial colony will help to make sure that you are able to process that food into nitrates and kind of help with denitrification and help with the breakdown of phosphates and other contaminants that come with such often feedings. In addition, keeping up on your water changes, you definitely wanna be doing weekly larger water changes with these guys, making sure to remove any uneaten food and fish waste off of the bottom, and that will help to make sure that this tank stays clean for you in the, in the long run. It is very common to keep seahorses with soft corals and macroalgae. That's a cool way to kind of offer these guys a little bit of enrichment, some new textures and different things that they can hitch to in the tank and things that they can hide and camouflage in. Generally, most of your soft corals, whether they be finger leathers, toadstools, xenia, or the like, will do quite well in a sea or aquarium, as with macroalgaes, if you wanted to give those a whirl as well. What's also interesting about the seahorses is that their color is kind of plastic, and throughout the day, they might kind of lighten or darken up and change shades and appearance in order to kind of try and blend into their environment. So it's a cool thing to be able to notice throughout the day that these guys might change in appearance a bit. If you've noticed behind me that some of these guys are not the most graceful swimmers, and that is usually the case for seahorses, they, unlike most of your other fish species, do not have a fin on the end of that tail of theirs. However, they usually use their dorsal fin, which on most fish is located on their back, to propel themselves throughout the water column. And then they also rely on their pectoral fins, which are closer to their head in the case of seahorses, to kind of provide some locomotion. However, again, like I mentioned earlier, most of the time they're going to remain hitched to a sturdy feature in the aquarium because they are not the most graceful swimmers. Also something that a lot of you guys might already know about seahorses, but really worth mentioning is that they give live birth in most cases. Unlike most of your animals, gestation is actually covered by the male counterparts where most male seahorses have a type of pouch that's located toward their stomach when during courtship the female will deposit eggs into the pouch of the male and the male will actually carry the fertilized eggs all the way until they are ready to hatch so it's just really interesting and differs from most other animals in that the males will actually hold the offspring for most of the time as they develop from those embryos and eventually once they are ready to hatch the male will open up his pouch and expel all these fully formed baby seahorses into the tank. If these guys interest you, feel free to reach out to us, call one of our locations, and we'll have a little chat about these guys. Definitely a cool aquarium fish to keep. As always, if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and keep on reefing.